Okay. Hello everyone. I thought I'd do something different. So, uh, well, let's get started. Uh, first of all, well, title is Beyond Simple Meeting and we'll see what it means in a minute. But first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Luca Pradovera. I'm now on Lead Solutions Architect at SignalWire. I've been, uh, well, based out of Milan, how out from Milan. I've been in the industry for quite some time at this point. I started with some open source work some 15 years ago, and I only have one good photo, which is that one. <laughs> and that's why everybody was seeing me present the last couple of years, it's always the same photo. I know I need to get a better one. I'm not really good looking, so it's hard to get a better one. So, Lead Solutions Architect, what does that mean? Because it leads into the rest of the presentation. I help customers build applications around APIs and platforms, mainly SignalWire, of course. Sometimes we have missing parts, and we use other components too. So I think my point of view compared to most of the audience is that I work with the customers, for the customer, and I'm ultimately a customer. What I end up doing at SignalWire most of the time is being not even an advocate, just literally telling people, look, I'm trying to build this thing and it doesn't quite work the right way, I need a new API, I need a new button, I need some other property. So I thought I'd bring today is what can we do and what has been done using oh, the APIs and the services we've been discussing all over the sessions that's not standard because honestly most of our business is boring it's a billions of dollars of boring business granted like you can do well actually calling each other it's underrated these days but people still call each other video conferencing all the kind of other simple things you can do call centers messaging IBRs by the way this is one of the the first statistics I'm going to cite today, 61% of customers hate IVRs. So find another way, this is from Reserve, uh, from Vonage, I think. And so find something else to help your customers. But that's neither here nor there. Just that most of what we do is very linear. I place a phone call, hopefully it works. A phone rings, someone picks up, and we talk to each other. And we've all been discussing much of this over the last few sessions. But what if we looked at some interesting data from research. By 2024, over 30% of customers are going to expect communication modes to be baked into other products. Meaning that it's not only a video, it's not just part, so not a platform you sit down in front of and make a phone call, like, or a call, like you sit down in front of our SignalWire video platform and you have a conference room when you talk to other people. People are expecting uh, communication media to be baked into platforms meaning that they do different things and the communication is just one channel. The other thing that I've, oh, sorry, the other data point I've got in the last few days and was working on research, not only for the conference, but in general, preparing for some other stuff, I realized that 50% uh, of consumers already use chat for e-commerce, but, uh, and the reduction of wait times, and especially the availability of multiple channels, has been very instrumental in getting revenue faster and better. Meaning that, in general, the market is ready. Uh, in fact, the Forrester report I'm citing there uh, says that people in a demographic that's below 28, I think, was the court, 62% uh, of them actually perform e-commerce through, directly through chat. Like, they literally buy stuff through chat or through services, not classic. Shopping cart, credit card, here's your stuff. So Amazon still works, so some of that still has to work. So I thought, well, I built all of this interesting stuff I've seen all of this interesting data. So I thought I'd focus on war stories. A few case studies of applications that are very known standard that have been built by myself, customers, team, or whatever, over the course of the last few time. So RTC is uh, just a component and it has some interesting side effects. And what we're referring to on the second slide is contextual communication. So the ability of, to have communications within another process, such as e-commerce. I am on a website. I'm buying a $3,000, I don't know, bag of golf clubs. I play golf. My daughter plays much better golf than I do, and she points that out every time, but still, I like playing golf. And you're buying a $3,000 bag, and you want to talk to someone, sort of. Or maybe it's a $3,000 pair of shoes for someone who's into luxury stuff. You click on a button, and you immediately speak to someone, which not only is there to talk to you, but they also their system is also providing them with your complete history. The system knows who you are, if you bought something before, what you bought, which products you looked at before that, etc. And the person can immediately help you. It almost feels like magic. This is just one aspect, which, while very interesting, is not even the most interesting. So I, I thought I'd just mention it. Using media as its own value in performing processes that are known standard, such as 
Well, first of all, before we go there, there are, such as the case studies, we'll see later. But first of all, a few things uh, that are going to come back later. All of the projects that we work on and we're going to see today hinge on not, no, no, no code. So this is all very low level stuff that requires very high quality platforms. So while there is a definite push in the industry for no code, for easy solutions, for things you can just implement on your own, be very aware that those have inherent limitation in how deep you can go in building products. And ultimately, those lend themselves to the classic use cases. And no code video conferencing is just something you can drop on a page and everybody that goes to that page talks to each other. But if you want to build something more complicated, there is a need for low level APIs and complex interactions. So don't neglect us. We are those advanced developers. We love building complicated stuff. Give us the tools. Uh, and main problems are still getting scale and time to market. Uh, so in, I will generally recommend, if you're building something complicated, look for a cloud solution first. Of course, obligatory plug for SignalWire, but we don't all use the SignalWire stuff. So really, look for something that can help you scale pretty quickly. The challenge is to make the development as easy as possible. And I really want to stay as possible because, again, this stuff is complicated and you need to have a multitude of features of your fingertips. So, where do we start? I have one customer who built a digital signatures platform around video. Webinar platform, very interesting because they use Webinar to sing it in a specific way. A celebrity meeting tool, which is super interesting in how it handles video. And help monitoring platform, which is my favorite project to hold for, while it's at the, it's not even the white paper, they're doing studies now, but it's going to be out probably next year. So, where do we start? This company called the Green Live is an Italian company and they built a simple platform that integrates video conferencing with document viewer. So what you do is you get into the video room, you're seeing the, uh, the PDF in a separate component that makes it easier to go through. It's for signing contracts, it's used for real estate closings, for example. It's not big rooms, it's two to five people. It was developed, it didn't, it didn't take long, it's one month. So what, why does video matter in this case and why is it important to have the proper video conference? Uh, first of all, uh, they need to effectively prove that me and Alan and whoever and Alex were in the same room at the same time looking at the same documents. So how is that done? It's done by, well, tracking the IP addresses and making sure everybody's in the same MCU video. So that's already hard to forge, three people in the same room having a conversation. It's hard to put together with different videos. So that makes it so that there, there's a layer of security there. Uh, of course, uh, and plus the EU regulations mandate that for a certain type of electronic signature, someone has to recognize you visually. So there is a human, one of the participants in the, vi in the video room is actually the owner of the company or whatever, who's having you sign the contract and they will identify you. Plus, screenshots from the MCU are included in the signature package and all the recordings are stored for legal review. So it all hinges around having an MCU that's legally binding because we're trying to prove that me and Alan and Alex were in the room at the same time. It's called a chain of trust. At a certain point, putting together all these little things means it's almost impossible to forge the entire thing. Like, okay, so I, you, I also made you sign using an SMS, so not the, a one-time password, you got to be an SMS. So that happened at the same time as the conference. It would be very hard for me to say I wasn't there because of all the different... So, just have a couple... Just a quick so this is just a screenshot of how it works and I can play the video too. It's just 15 seconds. So PDF viewer, video. This is actually recorded within an MCU, but it's split apart and shown in uh, SFU mode. So an MCU is where the video for all participants in a conference are all on the same video stream. And an SFU has separate video streams for each one of them. SignalWare platform allows us to do this. They're sorry, of course, but SignalWare is better. And the, uh, the, that allows you to have a great layout and build an application like this. It's really interesting in how, so we go back to what I said earlier. We're using some kind of a side effect, if you will, of media processing. And MCU proves that everybody was in the same room at the same time and provides the element of trust for a digital signature process that will otherwise not be really um, trustable because we'll know who was there, I got the OTP, that wasn't my phone, that wasn't me, all things people have said. Ultimately, and now I'll switch to the other case, uh, a signature on a contract is only valid until someone says it's not. So all you need to do, what 
these people will, were, are trying to do and they're doing is proving that uh, making it impossible to re niche on a signatory, which is the most important thing, because usually if I have a contract with him and we both oblige on what the contract said, we will never challenge the signature. Point is, I say you owe me a hundred dollars, and you say uh, you don't. We'll have to figure out wh who's right. Cool. So online webinars. This is another interesting use case uh, that involves using WebRTC. It may be slightly less interesting, of course, because it's really just a recording and playing webinars back. What this does, though, that's super interesting, <laughs> is that they use uh, WebRTC to preserve simultaneous events, meaning that. Uh, this company uh, does so the screenshot is better to understand it. So this, the video is just there, but the whole thing here is an interactive kind of room similar to the others. So these are slides that are projected. Uh, this is a PDF that's uh, that's made go to go forward by the presenter every time they want to go forward. And each of the events that happen here are recorded in a database, and they're timestamped on the recording, meaning that at minute ten sec at the minute ten second eleven. We're on slide 17. Then we go to slide 18. What these people do is they provide continuous education for lawyers that are required in the U.S. to attend a certain number of hours of mm, courses or whatever to keep the license or get a better license or whatever it is. And lawyers and CPAs, which is accountants. So what they do is they they play the webinar live, easy part. There's a person speaking. They just make the slides go forward every time you need it, like I'm doing now. But those events are also played back, so they can do a really live version of the playback. The only way for this to work, so that everybody sees the slide go forward at the same time, is using WebRTC. Because using WebRTC means everybody in the audience is getting the same frame roughly at the same time. Plus or minus a few hundreds of milliseconds, but that's, that's the tightness. If you did it with HLS, nobody will be in the same moment, so when the, the, simply, when the speaker says, like I did earlier, when the speaker says, we can look at the screenshot, the screenshot has to be there right at the moment. It can't appear 30 seconds ahead or 30 seconds later. Plus, this has quizzes. The speaker can also pull up a quiz, and that has to happen when they say they do. Like, Here, please answer these three questions. It will make no sense for people if they didn't get it at the right moment. So in this case, more like whoever to see is the important part. Always keep in mind, whoever to see more or less guarantees the timing of what's happening during the conference. So what they use here is they use whoever to see to provide an experience that feels like it's live, even if it's not. It feels like it's live because you cannot speak to the speaker anyways, because there is only one way. So it's, oh, it's the same thing as being live. No, people can't really tell. I don't even know if they tell people, like, my, but might very well be. There's just an event. They don't tell you if it's recorded or not. So, celebrity meeting app. This is another interesting use case that mostly, uh, so uh, what we do, uh, it's an up upcoming product we're building with a large uh, sports uh, organization, <laughs> which I can't say the name of. Uh, the, it involves balls, but they all do so. Uh, so what, what the idea is to meet celebrities, uh, well, sports people, before and after the game for a few minutes where you're allowed to ask a couple questions most of the people are just a passive audience, but one of the one of two of the people in the audience will be vetted before, of course, because you don't want people to strip naked or start yelling obscenities during the interview, and they will just go in, be able to ask a question, and the video gets recorded. You get an instantly shareable of the version of the meeting you had, so you can share it to the social to social media immediately, and it's you with this whoever sports person asking you question. It's I mean. I'm not a big sports fan, I'll watch a lot of American football, which is weird for an Italian, I know, but I like it. So I would probably appreciate, I don't know, asking Tom Brady why, why he is still playing, like, should just give up this one. It's like a billionaire or something. And how this works is we're using the SignalWire SDK in a very specific manner. What the SignalWire SDK has is the ability to do large-scale broadcasting through WebRTC using a mash of distributed nodes. But it's also able to promote, seamlessly promote someone to a speaker. So you're just a listener, you, you, get, you become a speaker. So you get the media, the device challenge, you get promoted into the room, plus the ability to do a back end production with kicking, recording, cutting, and pasting, and all the stuff. It's uh, a uh, plus, we're doing this with uh, time limited tokens and all the possible security, because again, people will try and join and do the darnest things. And I can tell you this already happened, by the way. So for now, but yeah, nobody's naked here. Great. That's lucky. That's probably the only frame that we managed to get where nobody's naked or <laughs> has a sign saying something. But this is the idea. So this kind of application has a few challenges. Mostly scale. People watching these will be 
thousands, tens of thousands. One, one quick demo we did, like 3,000 3, people watching in a few minutes, just because it's so no. As soon as something like that hits Twitter for whatever team, you're, you, get, you get sworn. There, there's a lot of traffic. So the challenges here are mostly in scale, and that's why I say many times you should look at cloud first. It's not always the solution, and, but please take a look at cloud solutions first. Last case study, but something that is going to be super interesting to a lot of people is the society at large is getting far, is getting older. We all know, especially in countries like Japan, where this study actually originated, and Europe. So what we've been doing is uh, I'm helping a team, a research team that is building, and well, they have an AI that's based on open AI, really, because it's very good at small talk, uh, calling uh, this is capable of calling someone and performing small talk would inform the context, meaning that they call someone knowing maybe the name of their wife and the fact that they like to take walks in the park, but also questions like uh, the, the AI knows they're supposed to take a specific, they're supposed to take a specific medication. So they will, the AI will ask if they take the medication and if they had any side effects. So Mr. Smith, did you take your pills today? How are you feeling? And this is only the start. So what's being done here is using the media itself, going back to how media can have value in itself as a, as a source of information, to uh, check what's going on. How is the health of the person evaluated? There are a few interspersed protocols, and the current work is about weighing each one of them to make sure the results are correct. So uh, the first thing is, the, is the call actually happening? This might sound silly, but the person is getting called every two days. If they don't answer, they try again the following day. If they don't answer two times, that's already a start of a maybe worry. That's going to be the first alert. Call wasn't taken. Uh, the, discussion, the discussion quality and answers. It's easy for, uh, well, OpenAI or in general a chatbot uh, to detect if an answer is in incoherent with the question. So if I ask you if you went out today and you say, I like ice cream, that's, uh, so that triggers something in a chatbot, triggers an error path that says, I didn't understand, please repeat. But at the same time, if you lock that, that becomes a source of information. This person has responded in a way that hmm, I wasn't expecting. Even better, the accuracy of speech recognition is tied to uh, quality of breath, of voice, and cognition, according to these guys who are doing the study. They have like 10,000 hours of recorded audio. Meaning that someone who speaks good, speaks clearly, <coughs> usually has no problems, right? You speak clearly, you speak loudly, so speech record will have high percentages. As you know, any speech recognition engine will give you a confidence score, whatever it is. Might be from one to zero, or from zero to 100, doesn't matter. So usually a normal adult in our age group is around, always above 90%. That's more of a personally tied thing. So some people might have a bad voice to start with, which is, but what they do is they detect decline. So I call you today, your average is 90%. I call you tomorrow, your average is 84%. I call you in five days, your average is 80%. Unless your phone is broken, which of course is absolutely possible, there's something going on. And it's been proven to be tied to decline either in cognition or general health. This is a very, very interesting breakthrough. And it, it comes from, a, actually it's a Korean-Japanese mixed team and it's being done by University of Milan now. And the last thing is, there is a Swedish, if I'm not mistaken, I'm willing to add to get asked the guys, but company that uh, performs recognition on the recordings for the call for biometric markers, meaning that uh, the voice itself, how we speak, uh, the, the kind of, there are some inaudible whistles every time you make a sound, especially with letters like an S or an F. Those were generally, there apparently some of them are tied to health. So the, the, again, detecting those in, mostly in overtime. So all of this is more effective if done overtime, meaning that it's almost useless to call someone once and say you're going to be able to know their health which has been a mistake in my opinion in the last few years. Many people have been trying to detect COVID via voice. It can be done, but you have to have hours and hours of recording. Hence the importance of having a small a, a chatbot capable of doing small talk, because I can keep you there all day. Frankly, the other, I mean, the nice aspect and socially relevant aspect of this project is that people seem to be very happy about getting those calls from the chatbots, because as you all know, OpenAI and a couple other engines are really good. These people are sort of lonely. 
even if they do get regular visits, etc. So they start looking forward to their daily call from their friend, which of course can be a variety of voices, uh, genders, uh, and knowledge areas, whatever. So you can have someone who used to play baseball, you can have them be called by an AI that knows something about baseball. So they can even say, what's your favorite team? That's the uh, time? <coughs> as soon as you can. OK, cool. Bam, bam, bam. So of course, the idea is that when something bad happens, like one of these thresholds goes below a certain level, they just trigger an alert, and then still need to be checked by, by a person, of course. Someone will drive there and go see what's happened to the guy. But it's very important, as anything, this is a very socially relevant project because we're going to see much more of these in the future. So uh, I think we should all be aware of the healthcare and social implication of aging, uh, of aging population, and especially among us, build the more developer-oriented platforms. Make sure you have features like that because it will come handy in the future. Of course, this could include video. Well, possibilities are endless. Do sentiment analysis on the video. So if, if the person looks destitute or looks better, or whatever, they look happy or not happy, could do a lot of things. The challenge with video is that it's hard to synthesize a person talking to, to them. So audio is easier because you don't need the visual. How do a, a chatbot, it's hard to make to give a face to a chatbot. It's not, it could be done, but it's a lot of more work. So well, single wire video SDK, MCU video rooms, recording, broadcasting, we do all of it and just have it as a plug. If anybody needs any help looking at this or would like more information about the virus projects, just hit me up and I'm super happy to do it. Easy to use and thank you. Excellent. Thank you.